So this is the before of Isaac's bedroom. So we can see the ceiling has this paneling and the walls, like that wall and that wall as well have some paneling and we want to change that. Those walls are from 1940s but it's just very old. We just want to look nicer. So we're gonna go ahead and, and lay some uh, dry, drywall on the top. Well, I'm saying that like I'm an expert, but I'm not. Because <laughs> my husband is the one that actually is gonna do the job and I'm just gonna help out, maybe gonna give some help, whatever I can do. The floor also will be replaced. We'll do the walls first. Yeah, we'll do the walls and the ceiling and the floor is gonna be less. Also, the closet has to be done. A little bit of the, of the ceiling there. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to hang sheetrock on our ceiling and these two walls here. Uh, you can see it's got this uh, wood, I guess it's like a siding uh, that they put on here. This is probably pretty old and I wouldn't like to salvage this if I can, so I'm probably going to pull it off here. I was going to pull it off on the ceiling as well, but there's nothing behind it holding my insulation back. So I really, I, it would create a lot of work to be able to take, to take that off. So I think I'm just going to screw it down, make sure that it's uh, on there solid, and then hang my sheetrock on that. It would create too much work to try to save that because there's nothing, if I take that down, all my insulation's gonna fall down. The other part of the house is completely modern, so there's no point in trying to keep the house looking original because half the house is already not original. Yeah. So we'll just make the whole thing look modern. Uh, so we're gonna do sheetrock on these walls, on that ceiling, cover up that hole. That's there, it looks like this is probably where they originally had a wood stove. Oh, really? Yeah, that's probably what that is. Okay. So this may have at one point been a kitchen, or at least they had a stove here. Maybe they just had a stove here for heat. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and put all the screws in the ceiling. Normally you don't do it like this if you're gonna see it because well then you gotta cover up all your screws, but in our case you don't care. Because you're gonna lay on the top. You're gonna lay the sheetrock on the top. And at the time they probably put the ceiling in, they used nails mostly. Mostly they use screws when I did were not very popular. Okay, you're so good. Yeah, it looks like it's got good modern insulation back there. That's good. So when you took it off in the top, how, how do you call that? 
can see there. He, oh, the molding? He, he moved, yeah. removed the... I'm going to go ahead and pull the wood down because I think I could probably use it in other projects. Uh, it's a pretty nice uh, old wood. That's, uh, so the wood is in good shape? Yeah, yeah it's in good shape. Okay. But I'm going to remove from the top up and that way I can get... I can hang my uh, sh the sheetrock and the ceiling and stuff all the way up to the, uh, to the wall there. These are, they're tied to each other because of the tongue and groove. And this is the last one that went on, was this one. It's also the first one that needs to come off, but it's hard because I can't get behind it. So I was hoping to really get under it. Oui! Oui! I got scared. Their tongue, they're what we call tongue and groove. You can see right here, we see how one fits inside the other. Okay, so the boards are tongue and groove, like you can see right here. Um, and so they're in, they're kind of interlocked with each other, which makes them hard to remove unless you can start from the top, which is kind of hard because I can't get a pry bar behind there. The ceiling is in the way. So once you get one loose, then, they'll, then all the rest of them come off easily. So right now I'm working on getting that first one loose. I can then maybe grab onto it like this. To hold on to. I don't want to go in too much because there might be wood behind it and then the threads will grab onto that wood. But if I can grab onto just this, it's still starting to right here. It's probably not enough yet for me to get a bite. Sorry. Is that old, Tiny? I guess so, yeah. That looks almost like a nail we would put into concrete. Let's see no, if I can this focus. Is shape, like, paper shape like that. There you go. I guess this is the old school nail that my husband's talking about. The 1940s when the house was built. That's why these nails really hold good. We use them really similar like that when we're nailing down into concrete. But I don't think we use something like that in, uh, in uh, wood construction. Well then... See, now, but now they come off easy, see? Then I see that they've got modern insulation here. So if the wood is that good, is it better to just leave it there? Well, the thing is, I think I want to I, I want to get the, keep the wood because I can either sell it. Some people would want to buy this because it's like antique. Uh-huh. Uh, you can use it. And some people want to make furniture out of it. Uh-huh. Uh, there's colors and things that you get out of this wood and cold that you can't get out of new wood. Yeah. Uh, once this first one comes out, the rest of it Wow. Wow. This first one we broke it, hitting it out because we're pulling it out backwards. Are you keeping the interesting nails?
got to pull out a bunch of nails here. One way is we just grind them all off, but I think that would make too much dust. So I'm going to take the time to pull each out, pull out each one of these nails. Sometimes these little finish nails can be really hard to pull out because the head is so small that you can't get a, a standard uh, nail pull on them, like on the back of your hammer or on a pry bar. It just slips right through. The head is too small. But this grabs a hold of the, the actual body of the nail. Okay. I don't know why I'm fascinated by these nails. Uh. <laughs> All right, see? Let's continue. How much? Yeah, we're going to continue. We'll take this one off. Let's take this off. Now let's take this little piece right here off. Is it that? Right here. Right here. You got your hammer right there in your pants. Uh, where's my hammer? Where's my That's your hammer? hammer? Yeah. This is my hammer. This is my hammer. Yeah, you're ready to work. No, this is just my hammer. Hammer? You have you have a hammer. Mm hmm. Yeah, he has a hammer. That's for sure. Right 
Okay, is that enough? Yep, yeah, look, it's enough. Yes. Yep, it's enough. Okay. Now, so now Daddy can grab it from back here with these. Now, Dad, they both over the side. Okay, throw that one outside. Throw this side. Oh, careful, don't hit the window. All right, that wall is done. Oh wait, no, not exactly. We gotta take all. We should take all these off. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, you did it! Did it! Yeah. out um, a regular claw hammer doesn't grab onto these nails very good it, it just slips off the top because there's not much of a head on there but these end nippers it's not really what they were originally designed for I don't think but they work they work great for that all right you guys uh, you look on here they have these are I can tell you they're really old studs because these studs are actually we, all, we always call studs two by fours two inches by four inches but if you've ever measured a two by four it's not it's actually one and a half by three and a half these old ones from like way back a long time ago they were actually two inches by four inches they're a much bigger dimension stud and that's what that's what this is here if you measure that that's actually pretty close to two inches by four inches if you look over here this is a modern this is a modern two by four here this is this is new so they did some work around this window before and they put new wood in here and you can see it's mu actually much smaller this is the way, this is the frame from the older house, which is much bigger. This is the newer stuff that you buy now. Mm -hmm.